Hi, everyone. This is a public service announcement to let you know that if you're watching this episode of New Kamak, for uh, now canonic canonically during this one, Darby is always facing a large echoing chamber, no matter where he is or what position he is. And all of the other characters talking to him are actually facing the other way. And therefore, their voices <laughs> do not reverberate in the same way. He's always facing the long end of the room. So that's why this one sounds like this. Uh, no, I think it's because, you know, I, I diablerize death. And so now the echoes of the, uh, the afterlife. dead afterlife are haunting me. Whoa! You could like, say they've laid the, death over it. They're like ecto echoes. Uh, nice. I like that. That's, that's, like, like, a, that that's like a pretty <laughs> sick band name as well. That's a Magic the Gathering card if I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> Go echo. Uh, quick recap yeah, that's a everyone's... plus two, plus two green creature that duplicates itself when it is attacked. <laughs> Ecto Echo. Um, any questions before we start? No, I believe we were heading to Brothers to fight some guys. Indeed. Here is the recap. Welcome back to New Kamak. In the last session, just as Excavo had previously diablerized the horsemen of the apocalypse known as Pestilence, Darby diablerized the horseman Death. In doing so, his perception of the world was altered with Death Sight, which makes everything look decayed and gross to him. And he sound also, echoey. And yes, and sound like he's in a in a crypt, in a tomb. <laughs> Actually, a tomb. Steve's in a, a very barren room at the moment, which is hidden by that that nice back. Yeah. <laughs> Empty! Darby also temporarily gained Tongue of the Asp, a serpentous power that grants him a crazy sharp tongue that can do an unconscionable amount of aggravated damage. It's basically a lightsaber in his mouth. <laughs> Finally, upon putting on Death's Golden Lotus Amulet, mouth, Darby yeah. began to see the spirits of the dead, and in particular... Prince Archibald's departed hobo best friend, Onion Jack. The ghost of Jack requested that his brother Jasper be informed of his death. So Archibald traveled to the mining camp where Jasper serves as the foreman, and he told the grizzled prospector of his brother's passing and arranged to bring Jack's body to Jack's upcoming funeral. Which isn't how that usually works, but it's par for the course for the setting of this game. The gang visited Club Wonderland, the nightclub that they recently became the owners of, and while there, checked in with the bar's manager, Marsha, spoke to Augustine's friend, Teddy Linkletter, who regarded Augustine as someone worth consulting for dating advice, and interrupted the performance of a geology-themed rock band. Enraged by nerds and itching for a fight, Archibald redirected Darby's aggression toward the rival bar across the street, a college-oriented mainstream sports bar called Brothers. <laughs> so we go now to the street between these two bars where I believe all four of you are, are going into, into Brothers. And as you do, you see that it's, uh, it's about last call. There aren't a lot of people at the bar, there are a, a few people at tables kind of like wrapping up what they're doing, like closing out their, their tabs and all that. And there's uh, a group of dudes uh, up at the bar being kind of rowdy. Who uh, Help me get to the right emotional level. Who was the one oh, itching uh, for a fight? Oh, yeah, I, I last... phrased that ambiguously. Uh, it was Darby. Uh, yeah, I was Darby, itching for a fight. Darby is still mm -hmm. ready to fight. Archibald asks if we want to go to Brothers to fight. That's yeah, what I have cause written Because I, right. I didn't want you to fight people at our bar. So I suggested you go <laughs> next to the is. bar across the street to fight the guy. Yeah, make Man, them I, did not, I did not do a rewatch of the last episode. Like, why, why am I so mad? You're amped oh. up from Diablo Rising Death, right? Oh, okay. And you have that crazy tongue lashing power. Yeah. <laughs> you have that, like, like, 15 points of damage tongue. Like, let's go fuck some shit up. But I probably want us to do something, like, important. 
No. And and you won't. You you went to Club Wonderland to try to get into a fight. That was the reason why. Oh yeah, you were looking for a fight place. like the whole last session. God, I feel Why like you're in your head right now. <laughs> you're like, that is uh, I think it was also the, I would the band. Never. I think the band like triggered Dark Oh, Dark Souls. Yes, oh. the band was very frustrating. I gotta, I gotta whoop some ass. It's starting to come <laughs> back. It's starting to come back. The nerdy band guy see, like stepped to Darby and then was about to get like tongue murdered to the forehead <laughs> and the uh yeah the prince is like oh let's go across the street so okay yeah yeah i i, I think i'm there thanks thanks for the background and i i uh pr- appreciate the patience for my crypt yes. the band if if we remember their name is dr rock and the geologists i was and hoping the geology department and the geology department made of of actual faculty and staff it was um on lead guitar was professor igneous drums was instructor metamorphic bass guitar was gary the sedimentary ga and it was led by dr rock rough on the outside there's some gems in there that's a rock joke (laughs) so anyway we just walked into brothers we yes. did. Um, uh, I'm back. I'm back to the level of rage that I was at before. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. you for that. The shitters. You're ready to go. Fully charged up. I just want to make I sure. Still that, uh, on the way out of Club Wonderland, I saunter up to the bar and find that uh, befrazzled manager and just kind of lean over the bar at the register and press the open drawer button and I snag the pennies and just pennies? pocket them. Just. And I'm and I'm not really coherently what? explaining what I'm doing. Just hey, hey uh, this, this, this is the button, correct? Hmm? This one right here does what? Yeah, that, that ding. Psh, grabs so, pennies, slaps the door shut, and uh, walks back out. So a, a nearby bartender is ready what? to like, grab you and intervene, but the, but Marsha stops him and exasperated just goes, "We'll deal with that tomorrow." He's one of the new owners. I don't know what his fucking deal, is. and it just just kind of wanders off. So, uh, so you, you go over to Brothers uh, specifically to try to get into a fight. Th- that's at least the initial motivations. Uh, yep. You go mm-hmm. in. Uh, the place is starting to, to clear up. They had just called Last Call. Uh, you see like a staffer is like, just starting to put like uh, chairs up on the tables. Um, but still up at the bar, there's like a half dozen college-age dudes. And they're all... Uh, kind of gravitating around one like uh, tall, like especially big dude wearing uh, like a shirt for his fraternity. And he's being like real boisterous and he's like slapping people on the back and he's like, he's like yelling. It looks friendly, but also aggro in that weird way that like young guys do. Um, And he's uh, insistently trying to order another round of uh, beers for the people there and like getting uh, the tones sound kind of argumentative. Yeah, I mean, Dar- Darby runs right into it. Just like, hey, are you trying to start something? Did you not hear this guy? He said he wasn't interested. I do not approach. <laughs> hey, man, I don't, I don't know who you are. I haven't seen you around here, but come on in. Join us. What's your name? My name's Trouble, and I think you better read the room, <laughs> son. Trouble, what's your drink? I, I got you. Are you stupid? Is that your thing? Or are you already drunk? Are you trying to die? <laughs> oh, bro. Are you already drunk? It's 2.30 a.m. <laughs> bro, I'd be happy to get to know you right now. Uh, my name is my name's Clark Manny, and I, I think I understand what you're doing here. It's late at night. We've all been drinking. We're kind of amped up, and, like, you're looking for a fight, right? Well, fuck yeah. Are you de-escalating me right now? What are you? Yeah, I'm looking for a five. I'm going to kill you, son. Look, I'm not trying to control or influence you. I just want to help you get perspective on what you're, the process is that you're going through right here. I would I'm like to, to headbutt to... this guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me a dexterity. Oh, we didn't even get a name. No, he gave us the name. He gave us the name. It was Douchey. Get, uh, yes. it, I don't even remember, but oh, did he have getting, a name? Yeah, he did. Uh, he, what's he, his name? He said it was Clark. formerly. He said it was Clark uh, Manny. Oh, Clark, Clark of course. Manny. 
His name uh, was Clark. Manning. I had a real. I had a real. Was that was name. that Clark? Yes. Like with an. Yeah, N? there's a gun in there. Clark. I feel my murderous rage increasing. <laughs> what, like what Clark, Clark is my guess. Uh, give me what Clark isn't spelled with an N. Give uh, me dexterity plus uh, uh, brawl roll, please. Oh yeah, you'd still have like a crazy amount of dexterity. Your dexterity is six oh. still. Oh, God. <laughs> we'll just say that lasts for the rest of the night. It, it's supposed to be just the scene, but whatever. So that'd be we six want to do more cool stuff. ten. <laughs> Ten dice to see if you could successfully headbutt this guy. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, don't have to be a data science nerd to know that those odds are pretty good. Uh, that's five <laughs> successes. So, Darby, are you attempting to do the maximum amount of possible damage to this guy? No. Or are you, like, pulling no. your... More. Definitely not. Definitely not, because I think the carnage that would happen were were that to be the case would be what's the word I'm looking for? Splattery. You'd be rolling ten dice for bashing damage. So if I if I may, with the storyteller's uh, license, I'd like to use all the success for like finesse and style points in handling this guy, like as sweet as he was trying to talk at me. That is the way that Darby just like physically embarrasses this person, thwarts all of his movements, but starts it with a headbutt that is just like confusing to the guy. And then just like before he knows it, he's just like on the ground flopping like a fish, unsure of how he got there. Okay, so uh, we'll say you're doing one bashing damage and knocking him down. Yes, that is my intention to not knock him down and incapacitate him. Okay, Hit and you do it with all those amazing successes. Uh, you do that with enough style that it looks slick, lightning fast, and it surprises and confuses everyone uh, around him who looks like they might be his friends and like might normally like step up to defend him, but they all like take a big step back, very confused by... by and Dar- Darby, are. at this point, finally is like, who among you will take a step forward and defend his honor. So so Clark, on his back, on the ground, kind of waves everyone back. He says, whoa, dude, that was a pretty good one. I, I want to let you know that I, I will consent to engage in mutual combat with you if that'll help you get out some of these feelings. But it's important that we both consent to the level of violence that we wish to have visited upon us. And I promise to you that I won't commit any violence onto you that you don't explicitly consent to. So I need to hear from you, you know, what you want to get into tonight. Did you just fight Joe Dirt? (laughs) Look, I'm just trying to be really aware of my own, like, toxic masculinity. I'm trying to check my own, like, aggressive reactions to things. And it's okay. We both got this, like, testosterone in us. We want to be violent. And it's better to acknowledge it than, like, pretend it doesn't exist. So, you know, let's get out in the open. Like, I want to help you through your process. If you're feeling, like, angry about something tonight, like, I could be here for you, dude. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Clark is such a I, nice, nice guy. I want to Clark do Clark. all the violence. Do you consent? I I do consent. May I also at that moment burning for celerity? <laughs> like yes. seems right. Okay. Seems about right. Yep. So Darby uh, would not just like wait around for this speech. <laughs> So yeah, he is yeah, in he, the middle he, of. He, the second he hears the word "I do consent," <laughs> he's like, "Boom!" And he's, he's going for like alarming speed. <laughs> um, so I think that the, if I remember right, like the, you can use the first level of celerity, and it's not considered a masquerade breach. You're just a super fast dude. Um, yeah. So he's he's in the middle of asking you if if he is permitted to punch you in the face, and then what happens to him <laughs> while he is asking that? 
I think I would like for him to get punched in the face in his talky little mouth, um, <laughs> directly in his talk mouth. His uh, talk mouth. And and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to punch him there later. And make a new mouth. At this juncture, um, again, I think Darby has always had an instinct to sort of put on a show. So he is very much like trying to humiliate this guy um, because he doesn't want to just kill him outright in front of his, you know, or just breach the masquerade. Uh, okay, so you're going for a punch and you have a second action that you can take in the same round because it's yes. Scary. Yes. Um, that action is a nuclear wedgie. <laughs> is that is that an atomic wedgie where it goes over the head? I think if you go all the way under the chin. <laughs> so it covers his face. That's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really doing, really doing valuable Stuff here, guys. That would so, be a wearing underwear. A celerity wedgie. <laughs> is he wearing underwear? The, <laughs> yeah. the fun I, part. And, and from his perspective, <laughs> like, from his perspective, just his underwear are going to appear <laughs> in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> and his ass is going to hurt so bad. There might be he, that's, oh, I was wearing those. those. Are, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 the experience that I want to recreate. Just <laughs> mystifying butt pain. <laughs> we, uh. found, we found a title for this episode already. Mystifying butt pain. Um, Perfect. And a big smiley face. Dexterity <laughs> plus brawl for that punch, please. And I would normally say that he would be putting up some sort of defense, but honestly, at this point, he... You're catching them so off guard. I see five looks, successes. Looks pretty good. You hit him for another level of bashing damage right in the mouth. And he's in the middle of getting out like, uh, and do you consent for me to pull? <laughs> he's just right in the lower jaw, just kind of jams up all his talking parts. And give me one more dexterity plus brawl roll difficulty calculate seven. yeah calculate a wedgie roll for me here okay difficulty I mean, seven with the cold shot because okay. you're swinging around to right behind her sure. sure. hey after darby finishes them off here oh, no. i'm allowed to diablerize this one right for sure for sure <laughs> the wedgie fails i failed on the wedgie oh no it's not, not no. a bot but it is a failure. No success. The horseman war is something to be reckoned with. So, um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. So he's in the middle. It's like, do you also consent for me to push? <laughs> and you punch him right in the mouth. <laughs> and you probably, you get real close to him, maybe like up beside him and you stuff your hands in his pants and just don't quite get a grip on the underwear. So you're left Oh no! Just <laughs> icon. With a handful of butt. Hand pants just a hand, handful of butt. Like so, Darby trying to recover is just like I'm going to turn you into my puppet, and it's just like, <laughs> just like trying trying to turn it into a thread, you know? Like playing off that 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 this is what he was going for all along from an intimidation standpoint. Not sure how effective that's going to be. <laughs> he. He maintains eye contact with you and sort of like slides like slowly away to like slip your hand out of his pants. Is like, okay, bro. Um, this perhaps requires even more negotiation than that. But as I was saying, do you also consent for me to hit you? Also, uh, could we take this outside? We're, we we cannot interfere with them. Like like packing up this bar. Yes and yes. And that was maximum violence that you already consented to. Is that correct? I trust my own ability to defend myself against uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, how about this? I'll take care of me. And then, like, let's both help take care of your feelings, bro. Because I've been where you've been. I get it. I want to help you. I want to help you through this journey. Okay, so your turn to hit. Go, uh, go on after you. <laughs> 
Just and let, he, let her rip. He's like, well, and I guess we go outside. Yeah. Uh, he, he leads the way he walks out and uh, just sort of motions for his friends to, to stay inside and finish up the drinks. And he's sort of like kind of resetting his jaw and he, he walks around the corner and he squares up and he's like, okay, you ready? Darby is looking at this guy. I have no idea how to describe like, like I like you, you guys all saw I have a new puppy that it, it is the way that my puppy looks at like snow just oh. like what the fuck he has never seen anything like this guy and it is I think making him more confused and upset like like he's his strategy might work probably does work a lot but with Darby it's just like infuriatingly confusing and uh Darby is just looking at the guy like, yes, hit me, go, wherever you want. For God's sake, I am going to end you. Now, oh. let me warn you, let me warn you, bro. I'm going to hurt you next time. I accept that possibility, bro. He is handling these punches like a champ, though. I'm not, I mean, I know you pulled the first punch, but the second one, like, just calmly gets back up. Pulls your hand out of his pants. Resets I, haven't, his I haven't tried to hurt him at all. I mean, I've only done two bashing damage to him. That could change what? quickly. I say he he might be secretly Super Saiyan. You don't know. That's true. And are you? But Darby just... does not have that on his radar at all. Are you just taking the punch? You're not like dodging or anything. That's correct. My intention is to rely on my like fortitude. I'm just like standing there, grin and bear it. Oh damn. Three successes and a crit. So for damage, four bashing. Darby, could you please roll three dice to see how much of that you soak? Oh, yeah, you have 42, too. Uh, so five, roll five dice to see how much of that you soak. Some. Quite a bit. Five. Five successes on five dice. So he, he cocks a fist back and lands a haymaker solidly on your cheek and uh you just don't move you don't flinch uh you you aren't even like it's just like he punched a statue and yeah yes. he slowly yes. brings his fist back and he's like huh uh-oh <laughs> uh -huh. let me ask you this before i go again you think that was worth it bro i'm following your lead we don't have okay. to keep doing about do this. We could talk about our feelings. No, 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 no. My, my turn, my turn. If I could, have, before you go, <laughs> just, 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 and, and, just in case um, you knock me out, I just want to ask you a quick question. Okay. What are you so mad about, bro? I'll tell you tomorrow night, and uh, uh, he swings. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say that like there's a clear pattern to this fight. Uh, he is not going to hurt you, and you are going to hurt him. Uh, yeah. You hit him in the face super hard, and uh, yep. it seems like his nose is broken. Immediately, blood starts pouring down. He takes a couple steps back. He's like, okay, that was on me, bro. I don't want you to feel bad. Like I may have broken my nose, but like that's on me for like not dodging you. Don't feel bad about this. This is a consensual thing. All right, let's go again. He takes a swing and once again just hits you square in the face. And it's just nothing. Nothing at all. Doesn't even register. Man, well, now it's just getting sad. Um, it, I think... It continue to be sad. <laughs> yeah. Darby's intention, and again, would love to succeed about at this sooner rather than later is to knock this confusing, provoking man unconscious. And, and, and I think it's so frustrating and confusing that Darby's, like, done. Like, pretty much all the bloodlust is out of him at this point. He just wants this guy to go night-night so Darby can go night-night and, and, like, <laughs> think, about, think about the end of his day and really think about his life. Because this dude has, uh, has like, shaken, shaken Darby uh, during this encounter. So, yeah, I am, again, hitting him in the head with the intention of knocking him unconscious. Yes. Uh, give me one roll for, for like, a, like, a tight hook 
to to knock him out. Uh, I think there'll be nine dice for you: dexterity, celerity, and brawl. Well, that seems six. Seems like a lot. Six successes. Uh, yeah, you you come up and just like a surgeon, just pop, and his head spins around, and he just collapses onto the sidewalk. In mid sentence, something about toxic masculinity yeah. and like channeling negative energies, and he's out. and Darby's pissed. He's just like, but you know, you know what? Fuck this. Come get your friend. He yells at his at his buddies and just gets in his get tries to gather everybody up to leave. Just like clearly in a huff. Just like this sucks. This isn't this isn't what I wanted at all. Another another person comes out of the bar wearing the the same t shirt with the same letters for the same fraternity, and he goes. Whoa, dude, uh, Clark was going to defend his dissertation tomorrow. We got to get him up. Well, I mean, he brought this upon himself. There are consequences to your choices, Clark. <laughs> so You were doomed to a life like this, Clark, because of the name you were given. So I'm sorry that things got Clarked up for you, but... <laughs> uh, it sounds like that is resolved darby's done he's he's out of gas ready to leave anybody else that wants to do something is more than free to take the take the narrative spotlight so i while this has been going on i've been unionizing the bar staff (laughs) sounds right and hopefully trying to get one of them to like give me a little blood too well um how about this give me please a uh, let's say manipulation plus politics roll. That'd be five. <laughs> there we go. Five dice for you. Okay. I love this. Just rallying the proletariat. Mm-hmm. Ironically, across the street from the the business that we own, uh, <laughs> that is not unionized. Oh, not you yet. That. Which I'm wor- I'm working on that soon. I think. Oh, that no. is one success. Okay. One success. Nice. You successfully convince one of them to uh, to look up information about how to hold a unionizing vote uh, and what the consequences of a successful unionization in that business would be. Um, mm-hmm. So they're like, yeah, I'll check that out tomorrow. And you don't know if they're going to follow through on it. And they also seem receptive to... Uh, to being led somewhere for further discussion about labor rights during which time you can feed from them. Is that what you wish to do? Absolutely. All right. Three points of blood. So I think that brings me to a a nice 10. Yep. Uh, You are uh, talking with the most receptive staff member and you're like, can you show me around the back? Like I can show you like where uh, like the paperwork would be put up. Cause you'd have to put this stuff up like, like in a public place where like your managers. Please tell me, please tell me you guys have a cork board in the break room. If not, this is going to be a real problem, a real non-starter. And you get led back somewhere where there's, there are no witnesses and you take a quick nip from this person and uh, get some blood from them. Are we all heading to, uh, Darby Manor. I think so. To crash. Yeah, it seems mm-hmm. like time to call it a night. We've gotten to enough shenanigans. Okie doke. Uh, so, Club Wonderland is. Hey, not- none of his friends happened to manage what his dissertation was on passively, did they? Just as like casual things people say when they're aghast that their friend got knocked out. Yes, Mister Hand. They it was about botany. Botany, probably. You can guess, but uh, none of them said specifically what like field of study he's in for a spoiler like darby does intend to go back the next night and and find this guy again and Uh, do what what's the goal well he said he would tell him tomorrow why he was so mad and then he was gonna knock him out and then he did so now he's gonna tell him tomorrow why he was so mad so Augustine, while well, his friends are clamoring around him and whatnot, kind of like tries to slip into the chaos and devilishly pops a penny in his pocket. Yeah, wait, you stole all what those is the penny pennies. Thing? Why? Into Clark's that's not, pocket? That's not plants? Yes. 
while he is unconscious, I, with a devilish touch, put a penny in his pocket. Oh, this is that ritual that you have. I forget devilish what it touch. does. What does devil's touch yeah. do? What? And it like makes nice. people like, not like him or something? Even yeah. the storyteller is like, what are you doing, creep? What? what? <laughs> it, that's one uh, of those devil's rituals touch. that I'm like, there, I, don't, Th- I never thought that there was any actual application, so I never looked it up. Thaumaturges use this Thaumaturges use, use this ritual to place curses upon mortals who earn their ire. Using this ritual marks an individual invisibly, causing all of, who, of those who come into contact with him to receive him poorly. The mortal is treated as the most loathsome individual conceivable, and all who deal with him do everything in their power to make him miserable. Even bums spit an afflicted individual, and children taunt him and barrage him with vulgarities. So you and, just this guy to be hated by everyone? Yep. Just uh, blank. Apparently, the difficulty of the ritual is one, and the system that I copy pasted from the book says I only need to put a penny on someone's person. Um, uh, but it, it it starts at daylight, so it won't happen immediately. It's when the sun rises. Because you don't necessarily know the results of your ritual. That's right. You don't know if it's successful or not. I'm going to roll it for you. It's going to be intelligence plus a cult difficulty of four. So it's going to be pretty easy. And your intelligence plus a cult is uh, pretty eight. low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not looking good for your boy Clark. His I wonder whole, how his dissertation will go. His whole life's getting clarked up. Oh, no. I mean. Yeah, you don't want to see that. I mean, yeah. It's, the count, The counting. Yeah, he's the, so he stole a handful of pennies like a goon, and now each of those pennies is an evil curse. And you're rich, We're kind of like evil Scrooge McDuck he motherfucker. Didn't get his own penny. <laughs> and he stole pennies from his own business so he could curse people with them. Yes, Ebenezer Scrooge type of shit. It's hard to say exactly. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna say in, in fairness, it takes like at least five minutes of doing magical stuff to the penny, but five minutes passed after we'll say about five minutes passed after meeting yeah. this dude. And yeah, he had time. Yeah. To- Darby was fighting that guy the whole time. They're de- He definitely would have been able to get away with. I say, I, I'm not, I'm not ashamed shit. about being awkward in public for all we know. I could have been at the bar, just like set the penny on the bar, doing woos at the penny while everyone just kind of like, what the fuck is this guy? Is there a way to reverse the curse? Nice. Wow. Right. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, there's like another thaumaturge could. Oh, but this guy wouldn't know. Like, I thought it was like, maybe if you take the penny out and like throw it in a well or something. (laughs) I don't know. So like once he comes into contact with it, he's just boned. He can't get rid of the curse. He can't get rid of the penny. His life is just ruined until he finds another vampire wizard somewhere (laughs) that wants to help him. Do I have that straight? I'm going to say, like, if if he ditches the penny, then he's no longer cursed. But it's it would be it's unlikely that he would, like, randomly find and ditch the penny. Yeah, maybe so it's, it's well out. hidden with all those successes that we saw you counting. Yeah, so, much. all right. Yikes. Clark, I, I didn't want this for you, but you know, like- it's, not, it's not all about me. And now I need to get to know how it like pans out because That's you insist on going to see him tomorrow. Clark <laughs> was actually a character that I played in uh, an episode of An Evening with the Authors. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. If if there were uh, more exposition allowed for Clark, more of his background would come out. Uh, oh, I have a feeling we'll be seeing Clark again. If if we do, there's there's more to him. Just because he was an existing character from outside New Kamak that I was like, it's like, oh crap, they're gonna go into brothers. Uh, I need like, like a a frat bro kind of character. <laughs> oh yeah, there's Clark Manny from that an evening with the authors thing that I did. Uh, nice. So anyway, everyone piles into whatever vehicles you took. Uh, Club Wonderland and brothers are not that far from Darby Manor. Uh, so you all head back there. Uh, you see evidence that Harvey the Jander has tidied things up in your absence. 
Uh, you see that Jade is still uh, absent from Darby Manor. Uh, other than that, nothing seems unusual. You go back and uh, does everyone just uh, lock up, head to bed, and go to sleep? Yeah, Darby's been mumbling the whole time. Stupid fucking guy. I, I toxic him. He's a toxic one telling me what I'm... <laughs> I, he doesn't, he doesn't know shit. But yeah, it just goes to bed. Okay. Uh, everyone else, same thing? I do a quick knock at Darby's door before he goes to bed. Oh. Uh, Darby, like, surprised, but yeah, goes goes and opens it up. Uh, yeah, sure. What can, I, what can I do for you? Hey, Darby, I just want to say, I noticed that tonight you were a little upset about your toxic masculinity, and I want you to borrow this, and I hand him a, a copy of Bell Hooks. Darby's just real confused and just, like, looks down at it. It's like... It's a book. It has pages with writing, and you can read them. What is this book now we're, Now we're even. It's called Feminism is Good for Everybody. Bell and Hooks. this is what you're giving me in in uh, in return for the uh, handcrafted. Yeah, since holder, you made me a cool gift, I got weapon. this. I got this for you. But don't forget this. Also, I also made you this lanyard. Okay. And Darby puts it on like the second page of the book. Um, and he, he looks on the first page to see if you've written anything. And... I did. Oh, it oh, says, okay. It says, Dear Darby, I hope you enjoy this lanyard and get rid of your toxic masculinity. Love, Archibald. Darby, I think, frowns a little more as he reads along and just puts the lanyard on that page. And What's on the lanyard? Closes the book a little too firmly and says, Thank you, sir. Good night. The lanyard, it's blue. It was just blue? Yeah. It's just it's blue. blue. Okay. It's his da favorite color, dee, maybe. Da da. It's maybe Darby's favorite color. Archibald isn't sure and guessed. <laughs> so, it's the violence. I think his favorite color is red. Nah, I think red is a color for girls, and he is really about his ma his masculinity, so I think he would go okay. blue because blue where, is for boys. Where is this coming? Where is this? Darby is a very enlightened uh, idiot. <laughs> Which is kind of what Clark, Clark the, his whole concept mainly was. From, mainly from the Clark. They probably would have been friends. I think that's probably what Darby was so mad about. <laughs> He's like, oh man, this guy's pretty cool. It's Shit. A reflection well, I, got, I still got it. Still got to punch him. Oh, man. You show me the parts of me that I'm not comfortable with. And I yeah, hate that. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't good. So Darby sleeps poorly, I'm sure. Uh, and Austin sleep poorly? Oh. Yes, that is the question. So everyone falls asleep. And Augustin, you fall asleep thinking oh, no. about zombie mama and the strange shell-shocked look on Paddington's tiny face and bringing oh. any listeners up to speed. Mama was oh. the giant black bear that Darby killed and was risen as a zombie and had to kill again. Paddington is her bear cub that was adopted and present for both of its mother's deaths. Go. Every teddy bear who's been good is sure of a treat today. There's lots of marvelous things to eat and wonderful games to play. Beneath the trees where nobody sees, they'll hide and seek as long as they please. That's the way the teddy bears have their big, big, Mommies and daddies will take them home to bed Cause they're 
Jesus fuck, what did I just watch? <laughs> wow. That was your bear nightmare. There was, it's definitely something. Wow. No mine. <laughs> that was terrifying. That's what I go for. So uh Augustine, uh we need you to do a willpower roll difficulty seven to determine if this mutant bear nightmare was traumatizing to you. Band so name number two for the night. Mutant bear nightmare, night bear. Does that does that work? Is that something? Night bear is kind of fun. Four successes. You are in the clear. You found that nightmare disturbing, but not traumatizing. Same, honestly. Next up, Excavo. You are asleep. You were dreaming. You are back in a black void, walking along a path made by broken mirror shards. And you hear the same voice just kind of like somewhere all around you and off in the distance uh, that you heard the previous night. And it's uh, the voice of what sounds like uh, a voice similar to your own that's kind of calling out to you like, hello, is someone there? And before you talked very briefly with this voice and they was someone who was like, I don't know where I am. This is confusing. I did where, and then they like disappeared pretty quickly before you could have like an actual conversation. Uh, do you reply to this voice? I, I, I mean, I just go, yes, yes, there is someone here. There is someone here. Oh, oh, good. I, I've been so alone in here. I, I, I don't know where I am, where, where we are. Um, where are we in, who are you? And I, I'm afraid I don't even know who I am. You have a lot of uh, questions. Um, I have no answers for you. Uh, I was going to ask you the very same. I'm sorry. I just appeared here. I, I have no memory of anything that came before, but I, I feel like I I didn't used to be here. And I, I feel very alone and scared. Do you have a name? Not one that I know, but if I'm here and you're here, then I we we must be connected or, or something like that. And then the voice kind of trails off and disappears. You see me? You don't hear anything, any other replies from this voice. You follow the broken mirror shards uh, up a small hill to the full length mirror floating a foot off the ground with little question marks in its frame where you find your own mute reflection once again waiting for you to ask it any yes or no question. Is there a way to bring back Onion Jack? Your reflection nods. And uh, you feel reality shatter and you fall down through the ground <clears throat> and you land it feels like you land hard in your bed like you're actually falling from a distance and you wake up the next day as does everyone else uh can i jump to the conclusion that uh that augustin heads out the door and does a his his uh, his hour of training with Elizabeth Blackburn for, for the green path over at the Tremere Chantry. Indeed I do. In the company of my beloved Paddington. Uh, so everyone else sees yep. like just as soon as everyone gets up, everyone sees Augustine uh, run off for one hour to do his Tremere stuff that he has to do. While you are at the Chantry, um, you, you give a lesson to Elizabeth, who's still learning uh, the green path. I think you're something like halfway through your, your week of training her in the first level. And um, you run into uh, Leslie. And uh, he says, 
uh, oh, Augustine, it's very good to see you. Um, and he kind of stares Agreed. off in the in the distance for a second, like he seems troubled by something. Um, and he turns uh, and I look over my shoulder at whatever he's looking at. Uh, no, no, no. He's he's just kind of like staring into the middle distance, like he he doesn't know how to like broach a topic to you. And uh, he looks up at you and and says, "Oh, um, do you have anything to report? Anything unusual? Anything that you've been working on?" I must confess, we have been vigorously approaching the devastating climactic end of not one but two of the legendary horsemen of the apocalypse you are approaching right. the end of two of them I... that is to say we have defeated two of them and seek to defeat not one but two more you've defeated two of them um Indeed. well I, I remember that you defeated pestilence but who is the other one we believe him to be death were he not well, death, he is most certainly dead now. <laughs> well, bully for you. While I don't, I don't mean to change the, the subject too too rapidly. This is a, a momentous cause for celebration. But uh, while you were in uh, the neighborhood known as Shed Town, investigating uh, what would appear to be occult rituals not performed by any of us, Tremere. Did you happen to feed while you were there? Absolutely not, my good man. Uh, in the throes of frenzy, we were too preoccupied to worry about such superficialities as our own well-being and hunger. Okay. Uh, do you know of anyone else who does feed in that territory. My good man, I am nothing if not direct. You seem to be performing an incredibly elaborate series of dance moves around what it is you truly wish to discuss with me. Please, my good sir, I implore you, follow by my example and be direct. Um, do me a favor, and at your convenience, um, go back to Shedtown and... Let me know if you find anything unusual about the place, especially with uh, the mortals there. And just report back. My, I, I do not wish to influence you with uh, my own perceptions. I, I wish to get an, an unbiased second opinion about something that I think was unusual that, that happened there uh, last night. Well, you are correct to value the quality of my observational prowess. Uh, a relationship, be it tenuous, leads me to belabor the question, are you putting me in any sort of danger? Oh, I don't believe so. No, I, I would not do anything of the sort. I, I, I would not allow harm to come to you that you, know, you, you do not willingly expose yourself to. Now, this is not a, a trick or anything. This is just scientific inquiry. Consider this a, a double-blind study. Do you have anything on your personhood that might otherwise benefit my observation, observational voyage? Perhaps something in your pocket? Um, no, not, nothing that I can think of. Just, uh, I suggest that you go to Shed Town and feed and just observe for anything unusual um i i don't know if you uh can perceive auras but perhaps if if you could sort of scan the area for like unusual auras and in, in its inhabitants that that might uh help us get more information and then report back and we will share notes following your example of you following my example i'll be direct i would like the contents of your pocket please and I just <laughs> casually hold out my hand. And he, he reaches into his pockets and he, he turns them inside out. And there's like a wadded up bloody Kleenex. And there's a very old looking remote control. And uh, a, a small bag of D10s uh, that looks like this. 
And he's like, um, <laughs> Augusta, if, if I had anything to offer you, I, I would. But honestly, I, I think that you are already well equipped for this, this particular journey. I snag the bloody tissue and thank him for his time. And I'm on my way. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I, I assume you reconvened the others back at Darby Manor. Um, and you leave, uh, the, the Chantry. One, one of the, uh, uh, one of the revenants says hi to you. Uh, Leslie reminds you that, uh, you have the opportunity to learn additional thaumaturgy from, from them while you are in New Kamak. And that's, that's pretty much all that. And then you, Ooh, I graciously greet the, uh, I graciously greet the ghoul and find an opportunity to refer to Lady Blackbird as Lady What's Her Fuck, um, though not directly to her face. Maybe in passing, so she can audibly hear it, uh, as my disdain for her authority is still monumental. You do that, but yes, didn't we send somebody else to the Chantry for like safekeeping or something? I thought we like replaced Thurgood. With some other, some other warm body. Uh, it was it one was, of uh, one of the two medics, Perry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, Terry medic was dropped off at the chantry mm-hmm. to just be, you know, immortal for them to to use for whatever. Yeah, the other one did. And uh, Terry was within earshot when you mentioned that you you killed Death. And you hear off in the distance from within a cage, uh, someone going, "Oh man!" <laughs> Actually, um, uh, I'm going to say this: while you're at uh, the Trumia Chantry, uh, Leslie uh, changes the subject and also addresses you with this. Um, he he asks, "Oh, while we are on the subject of Shed Town, um, do you know if there has been any uh, progress made in finding?" River Erickson, the gangrel that we suspected of, of maybe going feral and draining humans. Because it seems like he might still be active in, in doing that, which w- would be quite a problem for us. Alas, my good man, there has been no such development. But I assure you, my crack team of vigilante people are on the case. And the last update about that was, uh, I think Barry got a hold of Archibald and was like, "Hey, do you want me to take care of that for you?" And if I remember right, Archibald was like, "Pump the brakes on that. We will do it together." Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, uh, Leslie um, loads up his his phone for you and says, "This is why I think there might be some urgency, and, and why uh, I think that River might still be." Uh, hunting humans in an irresponsible way um this and he like loads up a news article he says this might be river again and if so then he's been hunting outside of his territory in shed town and there are uh there are two uh two articles that he's showing you the first one is an article on newcomacpress.com about two homeless men found dead on the same night one of what's being reported as a suicide and the other dead of what appears to be hemolytic anemia. Both men appeared severely dehydrated, leading to a tangent about the recent closing of a homeless shelter, uh, the difficulty of many of the city's most impoverished uh, uh, in getting adequate food and water and an upcoming food drive hosted by a local church. You put two and two together. These are both homeless people that uh, you guys killed. Uh, when feeding. Uh, the second article is on something called real true news world report dot info. And oh. it's about the same two deaths, but it's written by the site's operator, Arthur Campbell, who appears to be a paranoid conspiracy theorist living in New Kamak. The article makes a reference to another incident of what he refers to as an exsanguinated victim several weeks ago. And a disjointed semi-journalistic rant about how an anonymous contact at the coroner's office confirmed for him that the bodies could have had their blood removed, though doctors concluded that chronic untreated anemia and severe dehydration both 
uh, cause both of their deaths. Um, the author, Arthur Campbell, concludes the article. Once again, the truth is right in front of our faces, but the powers that be are either too scared to confront it or they're working with the enemy. These are not natural deaths, but murders caused by inhuman creatures that have invaded our country to harvest what they need from our bodies. Faithful readers know too well what this menace is that I've spent years warning you about. Just as cattle and other livestock have since the <laughs> 60s been found drained of their blood and mutilated for scientific experimentation, people are now increasingly being targeted by murderous aliens from outer space. Check back daily for updates about this ongoing invasion. And contact us if you've had a sighting or an encounter with these extraterrestrial fiends. Also, check out Real True News World Report store for the finest nutraceuticals. Your uh, your Jalic Bones impression is fantastic. Yeah, right. I it hurts a little bit. Anyway, uh, so you were left with these uh, news articles that Leslie believes to be about river killing people. Little does he know, both of these were actually you guys killed him. And he and he uh, leaves you he leaves you with a, a suggestion that like yeah we should probably get on that and then you fuck off back to Darby Manor and all of you were reunited and it feels so good so just to be clear those murders weren't the were in Shedtown the Shedtown thing is a separate thing that he wants me to look into mm -hmm. correct uh, when you guys accidentally killed both those people, uh, it was outside of Shedtown. Leslie concluded, like, this might be a river moving outside of his territory. Okay. Is Leslie, like, dumb and bad at his job? He is well-spoken, articulate, and charismatic, which makes it very difficult to tell if he's dumb. <laughs> he's like brick. I don't know if you're dumb or just stupid. So I inform everybody what's going on with Shedtown, and the uh... Suggest that I'm kind of obligated to go, but that uh, for certainly not a matter of fear, uh, I would like the expertise of my crack team. And also, I know one of you can read auras. Augustine, I was going to call Barry about this today. Anyhow, I think you and Darby should link up with him, Excavo, too, if you want to, and go check out the river situation. Wait, what, not... what are you gonna do? I had a dream. I had a dream. Oh. I had a dream. Archie. Hey, you this was your therapy, therapy session. session. I asked the prince a question. Excavo, is your dream also about scary bears? No, but you're, you're going to love it. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, so you know, I've, I've had these dreams about this, like, dark place. I don't know where it is, but there's glass and then there's a mirror, and now, like, I'm in the mirror, but. I get to ask the mirror a question. I, I asked the mirror if there was a way to bring back Onion Jack. And the mirror said, yes. There is a way. I don't know how, but there is a way. There is hope. There is a way. Wait. You used your question for that? Yep. Oh. Okay. Awesome. I was actually, I actually was out of the room when that happened, so that it's I a was, genuine was surprise. I'm curious about, because because we know his spirit is is out there, and is there a way to, you know, do bring back, let him do do life again? Do if life I, again? Are you listen, fucking serious? Listen, mm -hmm. I personally, Excavo, I think that's fantastic, and I love nothing more. I'm just surprised that you personally want to bring Onion Jack back. He must have made a real impression on you, as he did me. I say nothing to that. In my head, in, in my head, uh, it's more of a research thing where I'm like, I want to figure out if there is a way that I could bring souls back. Well, I'm in my mind, I'm like, to, uh, yeah. Archie, I'm just like, uh huh, yeah. <laughs> in my mind, you're doing a very nice thing for me for the first time. I'm imagining yeah, like a much more sinister, so she can like hold him at knife point and make Archibald like use it as a manipulation point for him. But look, I'm more powerful I'll kill him than the again. Prince. I can bring back people. I'm more powerful than the prince, therefore I should be the prince. That would work in your favor. I can prince better than the prince. Anyway, Darby and Augustine, I think you and River make sense to 
Check out Shedtown. Call me if anything is going down, and I'll come join you. Archibald, you I'm get supposed a text to have a message. Yes, you get a text message from Jasper saying, "Hey, we're ready from for the funeral. Just whenever you want to come by." So it was the next day. He he says they're they're ready. <laughs> Whenever ready you to want to come by with the body. Right. So that, that could be what you do. Okay, I was going to go have a business meeting with Marsha. You can do that too. But I w- well, I'm not going to miss Onion Jack's funeral, so I will do that and then stop by the Marsha situation, and then I'll join <laughs> up with everybody else. Okay. <laughs> Darby would not like Onion Jack to come back. So let's do that first. So you had... Your intention is to retrieve Onion, Onion Jack's body mm-hmm. and to bring it to the prospector camp to his funeral. And I was also thinking about asking Excavo if she wants to join, since she is looking for clues on how to break Onion Jack back. Therefore, his funeral seems like a good place, and his body seems like a good place. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let's go. I don't okay. see- so we'll say that okay. happens, and Darby and Augustine are kind of hanging back for the moment. Unless if they want to come to. I doubt Darby does. I don't. Now, normally, I advise against splitting the party for any reason, but not going. <laughs> uh, Augustine, uh, are you coming to the funeral, or are you uh, sticking around uh, Darby Manor for the moment? Archibald, where did you land emotionally with uh, your feelings on Jasper? I didn't kill him even though he's a capitalist swine okay i prepare another penny and walk out the door with you okay oh, shit. No. <laughs> All right. so you go back to the haunted house you drop down into the storm drain underneath it um and you look in a few of the uh a uh, few of the uh the the first body bag that you open up you see Onion Jack kind of clutching his chest with sort of a a peaceful look on his face. And you hoist him up out of that thing and very awkwardly sort of feed him back up through the the storm drain opening to get him back up on street level. Uh, Fortunately, this is like at the dead end of a uh, neighborhood where like, there's nobody out. There's nobody watching. So carrying a dead body, maybe 50 or 100 feet into adjacent woods, uh, no one notices. It's not like in the middle of the city or anything like that. Well, that's um, fortunate. When uh, it's a short walk to get to the prospector camp, uh, when you get there, um, you uh, you see Jasper uh, sees you from a distance and like, gathers everyone else up together and is like, Oh, he's here. He's coming. And they all stand up very respectfully and they have, um, they've, they've made sort of like a a circle with a, uh, just a a space in, in the middle, just kind of cleared off for, for Jack's body. Well, and, everyone, it, it's me, as is customary. The best friend has brought the body to the funeral. <laughs> Jasper motions for you to to drop Onion Jack's body, like in the middle of the of the circle. Wow, this isn't like you're having it here and not at a cemetery and everything, huh? And I say, lowering his body gingerly down. Well, this was all kind of sudden, and. Uh... I, I I suppose um, we can call up some. T- I've I've never done this before. Um, uh, Jack and I, our our parents have passed on, but honestly, Jack was the older brother, and he he took care of all the arrangements. I don't really know how to do this kind of stuff. Um, I figured we we just figure something out tonight. But but first, um, I'd like to give a eulogy, uh, and maybe we could all go around and and just say say our last thoughts about about my my dear brother Onion Jack. Does that sound okay with you? It sure does. I'm going to try my best not to just cry the entire time instead of speaking. I'd appreciate that. So, 
My older brother Jack was the kindest soul to ever grace this shit planet, and that's why I could never tell him that I was the reason he lost all of his money and has been living a life of utter destitution. A couple years ago, I convinced a very wealthy old friend to co-found a subsidiary of his company with the promise that we'd develop a revolutionary new method of fruit harvesting that would bring down agricultural costs in the third world. I knew it would never work, but my friend believed the idea, and he was such a good salesman that he supported it. He figured he could sell anything. I heavily shorted the company, knowing that it was going to fail. While unbeknownst to me, Jack went into tremendous debt, investing every penny he could into it. I got rich, and Jack lost everything after my wealthy friend passed away in Central America at the company's first press conference. I knew that what we were doing was dangerous and foolish, but I didn't expect it to kill anyone. Is this the hot air baboon accident yeah okay it is one could reasonably conclude yeah that jasper for eliminating all of the subtext uh (laughs) co-founded the hot air baboon venture with avon stank and was responsible (laughs) for avon stank's death and kind of setting a whole bunch of stuff (laughs) into motion for this particular plot uh, okay. Jasper then turns to the next prospector uh, next to him in, in the circle and says, well, how about we all take a turn at just introducing ourselves to Jack's friends here and sharing something about him? And the prospector next to him says, no, okay, I'll, uh, I'll go first. Uh, uh, my name's Chilton Burr, and uh, uh, I don't know, I'll always remember how Jack got the city to name Onion Alley after him. Uh, I'm not sure if it was to honor him or to warn people, but still, it was pretty cool. And the next prospector says, Hello, my name's Gus Buggins, and Jack once taught me to use diplomacy instead of violence to get that family of opossums to stay out of my business. The next prospector says, hi, I'm Clyde Barpit. Uh, Jack could drink more cooking sherry than I've ever seen a human being consume. That's why his gas smelled like the alley behind a fancy restaurant. The next prospector says, hello, everyone. I am, as you know, Myron Byron, and Jack owes me four dollars, <laughs> but I shall forgive that debt next person. The next prospector says, hi, guys, uh, I'm Milton Buncombe. I've uh, I've never met Jack, but he sounds uh, nice. Uh, uh." And finally, the last prospector steps forward and says, all right, I guess I'm last. I am Jessup Bippy Nips and I have a hell of a time reckoning with emotions. Jack is literally the brother I never had. And I'm going to be chasing fortified wine with onions and vice versa tonight in his honor. (laughs) And he dabs his tears away with a a comically oversized handkerchief. Uh, Jasper then (laughs) turns. I'm sorry, was there a Milton and a Chilton? Uh, Why not? (laughs) Yes. Among the broth. Yeah, okay. I quite like Myron Byron. (laughs) Yeah, no, he was my favorite too. Uh, All of them available to to embrace and make permanent immortal members of our cast. Um, uh, Jasper then turns to to Archibald as if to say, do you have any thoughts about Onion Jack to share? (sighs) Could I, could I really really quickly just borrow your oversized handkerchief please he gives you like the other end of the handkerchief which is like beach <laughs> yeah. towel sized and like he's so yeah we're, we're bo- we both have an end of it and so there's a prospector in the eyes. middle who's like blowing his nose into it i'm archibald alvins you may not know me but onion jack was my dearest friend perhaps even more than friends on a good night i've never felt a love or a kinship like I did with Jack with 
with anyone else in this world. Well, almost anyone. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. Hopefully, he's still out there somewhere. And Excavo will bring him back to life. <laughs> everyone, For all of our sake. Everyone looks at Excavo, because she is next. I have uh, never said words at a eulogy before. This is the setup that you get. I just, <laughs> everybody goes. Everybody talks about the dead guy. <laughs> that is all I say. I do not say any more words. <laughs> Everyone... I just stare at Onion Jack. I'm like trying to just look at him visually. Like, I ignore everyone. Oh, man. So Archibald's I'm like, maybe, to speak. <laughs> maybe Excavo's going to bring him back to life. And everyone looks at Excavo and she's like, no comment. I've never spoken at a eulogy before. And that's all I say. <laughs> and uh, finally, everyone that. looks expectantly at Augustine. Um, clears his throat. I didn't realize he came with us. Uh, pull, <laughs> oh, yeah, pulls, the, was there. pulls the bloody... Tissue out of his pocket and holds it as though it is a prepared script. Um, <laughs> my good man Jack was as tender as he was a profound assault on the old factory sensory array. <laughs> of the precious few moments I had, the profound privilege of sharing with him, his demonstrable generosity pierced the veil of the mortal plasticities that we surround ourselves with every day. Before his untimely passing, he made mention of his understanding of his kin's treachery and spoke deeply of forgiveness. In this moment, he passed unto me, stating that he may never find himself in a situation to do so himself, his most valuable, pose valuable possession, which he wished to provide to his brother on the condition that it never leave his person, his last and only penny. Do we know and about the to do we know about this at this point? What the penny? Do you have not had yeah. the penny thing? Explained? I've not asked, so I wouldn't stop him. I would just. True. So you give. Uh, I have his, no idea. You, you give his brother Jasper the penny. Of right? course. Telling him that Onion Jack really wanted him to have it, and that it should never, ever, for any reason, leave his person. He gets metagaming. <laughs> uh, why the fuck are you cursing everyone? <laughs> Can we say that the prospect that? The prospector uh, bites it as if it were a piece of fool's gold. Oh, and yeah, I was about to say to bend that. <laughs> okay, yeah, he tried to bend it. So Jasper accepts it, and he's given you, uh, like, a look that he's had frozen on his face for your whole eulogy um, that I can best describe it as Tucker Carlson face. Just that sort of, like... <laughs> Like a dog that just heard its own name and is like trying to figure something out <laughs> and wants to look as if he's following along. But anyway, and uh, all of the prospectors giving you the same look. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he accepts the penny. <laughs> thanks you for it. Pockets it. And, uh, and Jasper uh says well i thank you all very very kindly for all of your words uh about my my dear brother jack um i suppose we now commit jack's body to the earth and he looks down and then he looks back up and goes so does anyone have any uh, like ideas about we do have like shovels we could do. I, I'm. I'm not above like doing a funeral pyre thing. Like, uh, I Archibald, would personally would love think? to bury him inside of his favorite bunk bed. He had a favorite bunk bed. Yeah, didn't didn't we like almost give him a room before he died? Oh yeah, and I like <laughs> gave him like Darby's, Darby's bed. bed or something. It was Darby's bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that was a thing, right? That I Buried vaguely remember. inside of a bed. Why, why, that's a great idea. That's It's like a coffin, but even comfier. I just Truly wanted to be comfortable wherever he is out there. Well, uh, 
Archibald, uh, I suppose you could then take Jack's body <laughs> back to where it is. <laughs> you could take the body back to wherever the bed is, is what he said. But he wasn't laughing as hard as me. <laughs> That's you fantastic. Take the body back? Would you guys around? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I need this back. Uh, <laughs> no reason. Could you come <laughs> around uh, like four a.m. to Delacroix Manor and dig a hole in the backyard? I'll have the bed ready by then. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if we just bury him there? I don't. I really, I don't think I can fit the co- the coffin inside of our vehicle. And at this point, Darby is in full control of his like body and his memory, so he absolutely knows that this is his. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Jasper says, "Yeah, I'll bring a whole crew of people who can dig a hole for you." Whenever you want, any dimensions you want, bed sized, we could do twin, queen, king, California king, whatever you need. Only the best for my brother. I think that Onion Jack was a true king. Oh, fuck. King among men. A California king among men. <laughs> okay. So uh so you take Onion Jack's body back to Derby Manor. Uh, you still have plenty of time before they uh, they come back 4 a.m. the same night to uh, to dig a hole for you. And uh, the next stop is going to be uh, figuring out um, in in Shedtown. There's the thing that Leslie Lane wanted Augustine to do, like just check out the mortals, see if there's something weird going on with them. And also, uh, you have the address for River Erickson's house that you could check on. Uh, and you could also just snoop around the neighborhood in general. And we're just about at time. So we'll say that is where we're going to pick up in the next session. Yay. I don't think I've laughed that hard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, back. <laughs> <laughs> just the further desecration of Darby's like, <laughs> living quarters. I kind of I'm trying to remember like what was the exact situation with the bed. I need to like go back and look at that. Uh, he uh, was still possessed by Thurgood, and uh, Darby, uh, Darby and I were squabbling. So I told Thurgood that he slept all the time in his beloved garage. Oh uh, in yeah, the we gave <laughs> Onion <laughs> back his bed, right? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure we made him sleep next to a corpse that we mur- that I murdered, uh, and was hiding in the garage. It's um, especially funny given that this is Darby Manor too. <laughs> in my own house. My own okay. manor. Still, uh, Darby still <laughs> muted. So, end of session. That was a lot of uh, fun. Did a lot of talking about feelings, getting her feelings out. It was a therapeutic session. Um, uh, two experience points for everybody. Uh, uh, Archibald, is there anything that you would spend seven experience points on? No, I think I'm going to keep saving them up. Okay. And as always, if you think of something between sessions that you'd like to spend points on, just let me know. Um, Augustine, you have 26 experience points. Going to keep sitting on those? Yes. Cool. Darby, you got uh, 13. Last I heard, you are uh, waiting until you have 16 so you can get your fifth dot of dexterity. Is that still the case? Um, That was my plan. Um, However, it is also now interesting to me because this is possible to get my sixth dot of strength this is mm. possible it's very strong so Super oh, I, I turn my head i am uh, i am definitely saving up we'll see if i have the discipline to wait until i have whatever that is uh 
four times five twenty XP. You also have the option to get up to uh, an elder level, I believe, of any of your in clan disciplines, which is something that player characters usually don't Ooh. have the chance to do. Well, so let's talk. What are the venture ones? It's Auspects. Um, Let me look it up. No, it's not yeah. Auspects. <laughs> it's Dominate. Uh, Ventru. Uh, Incline disciplines are Dominate Fortitude and Presence. Dominate Fortitude and Presence. Yeah, I mean, the only one that would really make sense for Darby to go for is Fortitude. And despite his insanely reckless behavior, nothing we've encountered so far in the campaign has come close to damaging Darby at all. He just shrugged off a, like, five-success haymaker and, and took it as if nothing happened to him at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Elder-level Fortitude is cool in theory. It, does it have a special thing in this game, it or is does. it just more dice? Okay, well, tell me about it, and I, I maybe I'm interested. Level 6 is personal armor, and that's... Uh, you spend blood, and if, uh, if an attack lands on you, it could potentially shatter the, the melee weapon used against you, uh, or do damage to someone if they hit you. So, like, if you had personal armor and Clark uh, did the attack that he did, it would have, like, actually done damage and broken his arm. See, that's so dope. Like, I, I do think Darby likes to fight like that. Just defense by being a badass. And defense oh, by being baller. I, I might be describing that wrong. Um, a hand-to-hand -hand attack causes the attacker equal damage to that suffered by the defender. And if the attacker misses entirely, she still takes one level of bashing damage. So it might be like only like whatever damage comes through and you actually receive is also shared by whoever like hits you, if it's that kind of thing. That's way less good. That is like way, way, way less good. It's a uh, it's like after the soak roll is the only thing that gets put back. It's unclear because it says if the attacker misses, they still take a level of bashing damage. But if they hit, they only take damage, equal damage to the damage suffered by the defender. Um, I think I might have to go if through. They had, the if they had worded it like damage inflicted by the attacker, like before soaking and counter rolls, then that's like sounds like an elder level power if it's just that they take the same amount of damage like that's fucking weak sauce it's uh it's something i think we can because it's it's a little ambiguous we could like house rule that um it would all be an incredible expenditure of points for me to save up enough to get that i only have two dots in fortitude right now so it might not make much difference but oh i think that is I think before soak because the, the description says the vampire, like if someone hits you with like a sword or something and you spin blood and roll, and if you get more in the roll than their attack roll, the, the weapon shatters. The vampire still takes normal damage if the attack is successful, uh, even if the weapon shatters, though this damage may be soaked. So in that sense of like taking damage, I think that, that refers to pre-soak damage that you're taking. Okay. So I think it is. So just like the damage they get on their rolls is what they take back, not what happens after you like defend. I think that's one of the readings of it, and I could try to figure out if there's like a definitive interpretation of it. But anyway, that well, that's what I, I think level six either is. way, I believe it cost me ten points to get my third dot of fortitude as an in clan discipline. I think taking that shot on the chin. Uh, and and holding it, this encounter that was fucking sweet, one of the coolest things Darby's ever done, and uh, it seems like worth the role playing expenditure to invest in an additional dot of fortitude and put on the table potentially going for for the elder level because of the three in clan powers, that's the only one Darby would ever strive for. Okay, uh, so ten points for third dot of fortitude. 
which is going to be good uh, if you ever get uh, aggravated damage, because you can only roll your fortitude dots for uh, uh, for soaking ag. Um, All right, big spender. Who's right. next? And you still have three left. Um, Excavo, you have eight points. Is there anything you would like to spend those on? Um, I would like my next point of dexterity. Ooh. So you have two, and your third dot would be eight points. So, yeah, third dot of dexterity. You can do it. Someone wants to be better at shooting their gun. And I'm faster. Done. All right. Anything else uh, we want to talk about to wrap up this fun session? Are we good? Was this fun? Well, what is should we give you a heads up of what we intend to do next time? Next time? Um, yeah, yeah, that would help. I mean, Darby doesn't really have any. I mean, he's down to go knock some skulls with uh, with Barry Bruja, but I think we should all stay together if we're going to do combat. That would be more fun. Like if you're gonna split, if, I, I don't think we should split up. But if the prince wants to like split split his forces, then I think that's you know that's what we'll do. I see my... the four of you, and then Barry, kind of going from place to place. Yeah, my thought with that was go divide until we find clues while we're investigating, mm -hmm. because typically when we have gotten into combat when we're separated. Graham, being a very nice DM, has just, like, it's been, like, a phone call, and then we, like, rush over there and join the fight, and it hasn't been a problem so much. Then again, now it could be, but... Yeah, that's true until it isn't. He speaks the true true. Um... I just figure, oh, I mean, I guess this uh, River Erickson thing is going to be the next... Well, that, so that's definitely part of it. So that's what Darby wants to do. But what was the other thing that you guys were going to do? Uh, Shed Town or Oh, right, 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 right. Which are all in the same kind of area, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, Newcomax is just not that big. Yeah. River lives like can, in Shed Town. Yeah. Yeah. So Shed Town next time on Newcomax. Pew, 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 pew. I can dig on that. Pew, pew, pew. At um, some point, I do want to get the business affairs in order since we've been neglecting Marsha, too. You were coming what up with What day is it in ideas. game? What, what? What day is it of the week? Because um, we have a chess game on Saturday. It's oh, yeah. coming up. I don't think we're there now. yet. It's like Thursday. Uh, like it's Thursday? It's just a little after sunset on Thursday, April 30th. Oh, okay. It's Thursday. Two days. Yeah, a few days. Got to practice. Yeah, you, you, how are you playing it? You going Karo Khan? Like, what's your what's your mix? Uh, Do we know the format of the chess so, matchup? Do you know enough about chess to stage this, Graham? Do we need to like have an intervention? You know, watch uh, some uh, Queen's Gambit and yeah. Uh... <laughs> I will. I will say, like, I I have wondered about like we could construct like a a <laughs> chess game that's really uh, symbolically beautiful. Do we know anyone who's like really good at chess? <laughs> because I wanted to analyze like the actual game, but I don't think we had the actual correspondence game between her. Because I wanted to see what what openings and stuff she uses. You can't. You do have access to like all those letters, and if you put some work into it, you could like piece them together and mm -hmm. come to some sort of conclusion. Oh yeah, I totally want to do that. Okay, so I think. I think that's it for tonight. Uh, next session, going to group up with Barry, go to Shed Town. Uh, Augustine's going to follow his instructions, his vague instructions. Uh, everyone else is going to maybe help him. Also, there's River's uh, address that you can visit to see if you if he just happens to be there. And I think that's it. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. See y'all later. <gasps> puppy, wait, puppy. Kitty. Pup. Kitty. Kitty. Not puppy. See you guys. All right. Later, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.